G'day everyone. Today I'm going to take the time to discuss uh, two applications that I use uh, pretty much permanently now as part of my role as the Dungeon Master. Um, I'll be playing basically D&D 5th edition with my groups um, and these two applications I use pretty much on a permanent basis uh, to manage my campaign and uh, all of my characters in combat. So the applications are Realmworks and Hero Labs. These are both applications designed and developed by Lone Wolf. Um, and we'll basically swap over to Realmworks now and run through what it can do for you. So what you're looking at now is, is Realmworks, and this is a campaign management tool designed specifically for Dungeon Masters and Game Masters. Um, with basically the, the idea that uh, it's a place for you to put in all of your information about your world, your cities, your towns, your players, your NPCs, your items, your rules. Pretty much anything you could imagine that would go into your world, you should be able to basically document um, and sort of build and develop inside of this tool. And then this tool acts like a massive big database for you to go back and uh, basically find all that information and collate that information into a way that makes sense to a, to a dungeon master. And there's some tools basically designed to really make use of this information when you're at the table. Um, it's really designed, in my opinion, as something you would use as a, as a laptop, um, basically running on the laptop when you're dungeon mastering. Uh, it's something that I personally don't use module books for anymore. I, I don't use books at the table. I don't use PDFs. Um, pretty much everything that I do is in, with, within Realmworks. And when I'm reading to my players some uh, pre-populated content, I'm reading directly from Realmworks and I'm working from there. So we'll start off by having a look at uh, basically Realmworks. Um, I've got the screen focused at the moment on what we call the mechanics reference. This is a basically separate section of the application designed for you to uh, basically start listing all of your information that's specific to the, the system that you're running. So in our case D&D 5th edition, um, we can basically go down and see that uh, you know I've, I've got my monsters here, my monster manual. You can see I've got a massive big list of the monsters. Uh, you can see up here I've got my spells. And all the spells are listed, uh, and a few other details that basically come be useful. So my player handbook, I've, I've done it by chapter, and just some basic rules that we use in play. Now the, the really big significant thing about uh, Realmworks and the benefit it gives you is the fact that everything that you do, um, every named object that you make, so all the names over here, once you put them in the system, Whenever you type that name anywhere else in the application, it automatically generates a link back to the content that you created. And this is a huge feature, because um, you can imagine here, if we go down to the monster manual, uh, let's have a look at an orc. So here we've got an orc. Every time I, I have a module text that has orc written it, it's gonna create a link to this content here, which gives me its instant access over to the statistics for it. You can see here I've got a picture, and we've also got what we call a Hero Labs uh, portfolio file. Um, so this allows me to use uh, Hero Labs to obviously have the uh, statistics for the walk as well. You can see here it's listed in a nice, neat manner. So every monster that I use, I haven't populated all of the details for all of them yet, but uh, what I do is when I'm prepping, I, I go through and prepare the ones that I'm using. I have all this information here. Um, which is really handy and really useful. Um, I've done the same thing with the spells. You can see the spells are all populated. Uh, it's got all the necessary information to utilize the spell at the table. Now every time I type alarm into a piece of text, it's going to ask if I want to link it to this alarm section. So I can basically have the, the right spells linked from all of the content that were actually listed in within the text. So as you can imagine, the mechanics reference section is a really great place to sort of gather all of your information here and what you're doing. Um, and it goes a little bit further than just having this sort of stuff. Uh, you can see here I've actually got some audio, uh, got some sound effects, for example, and you can actually utilize these on the table and have them play. So if I'd set this up properly, I could actually type in, you know, a... Uh, an encounter where the orcs are attacking and I could actually type in their arrow trap. Um, I'd probably rename this if I was going to do that. And to say arrow shooting or something and name it something that you're going to recognize and then when you type that into your module you could say play sound arrow shooting and basically just come in here and press play and off you go. 
So that's the mechanics section. It's it's a really good place to sort of organise everything. Um, and you know the best thing about it is if you are one of these people that go out and get into the third party content, you know like Tomb of Beasts that a lot of us are getting into at the moment, you can basically you know keep coming and adding these in. Um, these have all had to be entered manually, by the way. Currently, uh, hoping that changes in the future with the release of a content market. Um, we should know more about that by the end of next week, but at this stage, uh, you're doing manual entry for everything. So once you've set up all of your mechanics, um, and I feel it is important to do that first, um, then you can start entering adventure content into the tool. And that's where we come back over to this button here, the World Almanac. And this is where you basically start entering all the details of your campaign and your world. Um, you can see here that there's some master headings. So sources, events, people, groups, places, things, and other. Really designed to help categorize your campaign world and make it easy to sort of manage. I started off doing that when I first started using the application, as you can see down here. But I pretty much moved away from doing um, my own homebrew world and, and moved off to do the storylines that were coming out of uh, the, the official modules, really. And you can see here we even played over with some Pathfinder stuff as well. Um, and the way I, I do it is I basically organize it by chapter. So the first thing I'll do when I'm entering all of my books in is I'll obviously create a content, uh, an overarching content for them. Then I'll create the chapters. And then underneath each chapter, I can literally break it down as the book breaks it down. Um, and the reason why I do this is you'll find that in the official books that the names are often reused um, in italics uh, to indicate that you know they are referring back to that chapter or that reference point. And this uh, software is smart enough that if it recognizes, you know, rumors in Red Larch in another piece of text, it will now create a link straight to the rumors in Red Larch, making it a lot easier for me to sort of go back and find that information as I'm reading it. Here you can see an example piece of text, and you can see all of the links that have started to basically auto-generate. Um, and you can see here that, you know, it, it makes it so that if I want to read about Belliard, I can just click on Belliard and go straight through to Belliard um, if I want to look up a night from there, I just click the night and away I go. Um, so the linking is a very powerful system. It makes it very easy to sort of track down the information that you need as you're actually reading that content in front of you. And just to show you the the, the real ease of this sort of application, uh, let's go back up to this one here. So Let's go three orcs. Just to give you an idea of how well the linking works, the players encounter three orcs. It's notified that there's orcs there. I can tell it's coming from the monster manual. Create link, and boom, that's there. Now you're not always presented with that window that lets you choose. That window only pops up when you have multiple entries of the same name, which obviously for orcs I do. Um, if there was just a single entry, it would just automatically create that link. But that's how hard it is to create a a link in the system, so and that's why I basically recommend that people go through and put their monsters and their spells in first. So you've got all those there. So as soon as you've obviously start entering a content, it automatically recognises that sort of thing. Now it supports snippet styles, which I really like. So you can come in here and go snippet style. You go as a read aloud section. And that would basically highlight it as a read aloud section. Uh, there's other ones. You just basically different ways to highlight things. You can actually convert to GM directions as well. You can see that really calls that out with a border around it. Um, the, the big difference there is there's no little button here on the side of it for a GM direction. I'll see that's because GM directions should generally only ever be read by the direction uh, by the GM itself. What these buttons here actually do is make the content player visible. So if there was someone using the player application version of this tool um, connecting to your realm and you had these buttons linked, they'd be able to see all of this content. So they should be able to see player GM stuff. It's not a feature I use though, so I won't go too deeply into it. Just gonna clean this up quickly. All right, so obviously that's that's really handy sort of way to, to be reading your content, I find. Um, and generally what I'll do is, is obviously read through the content as you would in the book. If my players were 
coming into the uh, the Temple of the Black Earth, for example, I generally read through the, uh, the start of it and get a general idea of obviously what the, the temple is going to look like, and that's, you know, the, the temple features. But then what I do here, and this is where I really love RuneWorks, is you can put in a map. And this is what we call a smart map. So the smart map allows you to put pins all over it. Um, it also allows you to have what we call fog of war. As you can see there, you could quite easily utilize this to sort of run at your table if you wanted to. So it's quite easy to use the fog of war system. Um, and the, the basically software is entirely set up so that you can have dual screens running off this software. Um, so you can actually have a player preview screen. You'll see over here is uh, I've actually got it set up so the display 2 is my, my second monitor. And I have this information here is what's displaying to the players on that screen. So you can see here they're in Riverguard Keep last time we played. And here I'm utilising the Fog of War system. Um, so they basically can't see the rooms they haven't been into. Um, to show you how cool that really is though. Uh, let's go back here. What I'm going to do is, when I'm running this, this adventure, I don't run it like this. Um, as you can see here, I've got all of the, the information listed for this entire adventure. That's not how I actually run it at the table. What I do is I open up the map, and I click that little button there, which basically sends it over and creates a navigation pane. So that then runs on the right uh, left-hand column, and from there I can just simply click the content and have it open up on the right-hand pane. And as you can imagine, this is super efficient for running a dungeon. Makes it a hell of a lot easier. All right. So in this case here, my players fought four hobgoblins. One of the things you can actually do uh, that's really powerful, as I said before, with the, uh, the other player screen, is actually send these photos directly to the player screen. So I can just basically click the click of a button this is now visible to the players um, on a second monitor facing them, so they've got an indication of what it is that they're fighting. I find that to be a really cool tool. My players love it. Um, I show NPCs, I show maps, I show handouts, whatever they want to see, um, I can basically display to them quite easily. Um, and obviously any content that I've pre-populated into the tool, any images that I've got, I can send across quite easily as well. Um, and that does go further than just having um, just pictures. Uh, there are other content as well. Not those ones, unfortunately. But if I wanted to send this text here, I'm pretty sure I can do so. There you go, show and player screen. So as you can see, it's quite simple to, to send pretty much anything over to the tool. All right, so obviously running dungeons, that's a really good mechanism for, for running a dungeon. It's really efficient and it's easy just to work your way around. It's not all they offer though. So if we click up here on the storyboard option, it has full capabilities for coming in here and creating uh, really detailed flowcharts. And the benefit of the flowcharts is you can basically link any of the content over to uh, other content that's, that's in. So all of these nodes, for example, um, you can actually see take the high road. I don't actually have any associated content with this one. You can see it's actually linked here with a nice circular border. But then you see the ones with the square borders. Square borders indicates that it's linked to content. And again, I can click this navigation button and have that come over here. And now I can now run this at the table. So my players go to Neverwinter as part of this adventure. From here, they can like open up the map. Um, I could have pins here for some key locations. Um, and you know, once they're in Neverwinter, they might speak to Captain Dunnish. So I can click Captain Dunnish. I can show them a photo of Captain Dunnish. I can get an idea of who he is. I can see his stat block. And you know, we move on. And again, so this is a really efficient way to keep track of your story. Um, this is obviously bigger than a dungeon. Um, so here you can really keep track of maybe where your players are going or where you think they're going. Uh, or if they deviate, you can just basically create new nodes and connect the content and off you go. 
uh, as you can see, I've really been mapping out the history of my players here um, and where I think they're going. Let's hope they get there. So again, that's a really powerful functionality. Um, there's another really cool feature that I like and I can use quite a bit, um, and that is with the storyline, you can assign it to a view. So you have the ability to create these views, and what that gives you the ability to is display those views up here as buttons. So in the cases of Princess of the Apocalypse, I've actually created all the Princess of the Apocalypse content and I've linked it in here. So now I've got a nice clean view uh, that only contains Princess of the Apocalypse uh, entries, allowing me to keep all that content in one place and it's nice and easy, nice and simple to find. Uh, you can see the auto linking happening pretty much everywhere. I said, really powerful feature. Um, to give you an idea of what it could do for you, and this could crash my computer, so just hold with me here. This is a big map. There we go. So when I opened up the Storm King's Thunder book, I was really happy to see the amount of uh, different locations that pretty much provide a little bit of detail onto. And of course, that led me to deciding to map that all out. So as you can see here, I've started work on this, and this will basically be my map of Farron. Uh, it's going to give me all of the details on all the locations that they could possibly go to. I, I did have to shrink this map in order for it to work with the application. Obviously, the original is an absolute huge file. But as you can see here, I've started linking it to all of the content. Uh, and you can see basically the little yellow boxes next to the pins indicates that there is linked content to that, where that one there is just a pin at this stage. So this is a work in progress. Um, and again, you can run this as a navigation pane, or in this case here, you can just click through and you can go to these locations and find out more information about it. So here I've got Menzo. I can click on Menzo, bring that open, see a bit of a detail about the city, show my player the picture of what it looks like, and then we can obviously bring up a map on where they want to go within it, and from that map I can have more pins and more nodes for where they want to visit. Once again, these are all really cool features for any sort of people who want to really maintain their world and create and develop something over time. All right, there are user notes in here as well, so if you just want to take notes, you can come in here. And notes are really simple and again you can type anything and it's going to create your links. So you can see it automatically generated the goblins but it asked me about the orcs, it's because there's only one goblins entry but there's multiple orcs entries. You can see over here everything has a content links page so I can see that this is a list of everything that will link from this page. Um, it's really quite handy, I find, for prepping. I just look over here for little green icons that tells me how many figures I need to get out for, for my table, how many models. So again, that's really handy. Uh, all right. Uh, I should mention that it's got tabular view, obviously just like a, a web browser. Uh, it's pretty much standard these days. Um, I should mention as well that my database is significantly huge. Uh, you can tell by the amount of modules that I've entered in. Uh, it's been growing over time, so that's why it takes a bit longer for me to load my pages. Um, it's a problem that I think is going to disappear once they release the content market and the ability for me to copy my realms, because instead of basically having all of my books in the same entry, I'm, I'm going to get to a stage where I'm going to basically make copies of my realms um, with all the mechanics, but one book. Um, per realm and that will really speed me up I think on how the entire thing works so you know here I'd replace all of these storylines into individual realms so we're not having copies upon copies of things all right so as you can see from here there's a, there's a real lot you can do with this tool um, it's a really powerful system um, you, you can obviously create new content super quickly and you just start filling it in um, and I'll be honest, that is something that uh, a lot of people uh, find overwhelming when they first start this tool. It is so huge, it is so significant that, you know, there's always something you can do in it and you're going to want to do it all. Um, you just got to obviously understand that that's not the best approach. Get a plan and, and run with it. All right, oh, here's some shops that I've got in Neverwinter. You can see I've got them set up with NPCs and everything they've got for sale. 
So yeah, I could keep showing you things for hours. Um, you can set up however you like, you can organize however you like, and it's just, honestly, it's fun. I enjoy coming in here and filling this out and having a look at my NPCs and visualizing what they look like and setting everything up. But that's not all there is to it. Uh, there's a lot more power here in what you can do with this tool and the ability that you can take this through to combat. So if we go through and have a look at the... let's go to the Temple of Elements or whatever. Oh. We'll go to the Temple of Black Earth. So we'll go back here. Alright, so let's say I'm running the Temple of Black Earth. Uh, my players have come in here. Uh, in this case, they've encountered some uh, Doppel Rats. Um, for anyone that has seen these, these come from the Tomb of Beasts book uh, that was put out by the Kobold guys. Um, a really interesting fight if anyone's not run them yet. Uh, every time the rat gets upset, it basically quadruples into, I think, four rats. Um, really interesting fight. But the interesting thing is, you can see down here I've got a Hero Lab statistic file that's running. And I can click the little play button and I can see the uh, the abilities. There's the arcane doubling that is absolutely hilarious. Which is great, but it's not what I use uh, when I'm at the table. Down here in my start bar, you can actually see that I've got Hero Labs running. Uh, and Hero Labs is currently running uh, well, I'll just get rid of all my enemies with a list of all of my players. Uh, and these are character sheets that I've got for my players. So Hero Labs, for anyone who's not seen it, is obviously a character uh, creation application. Um, you come through and you basically start on the left tab and you work your way through creating your character. Uh, it's super quick, it's super simple to, to create a really detailed character. Um, and it's fully automated in that, you know, all of your ability roles and things like that are going to update depending on what you're wearing and what armor you've got and magic items and that sort of thing. This is a very powerful piece of software. So I'll just show you through. Obviously you've got your spells. Um, the benefit is obviously you can come and hold over your mouse over spells and you can see what spells they've got, which is really, really handy. You can see your skills. Again, you've got mouse overs on everything. What weapons they're wearing. I have equipped. Uh, as you can see when I, when I equipped that down here, you can see it came up and that the fact that it's equipped. What armor they're wearing, what magic items, what gear, you know, it's, it's all pretty there. You can have a picture of them, put some pretty information in there, and off you go. Generally though, when you're playing, you have this uh, special tab up, and this has all the actual abilities that they use, uh, and this gives you really quick access to all of their abilities and all their spells and everything you need to track them in game. You can track all of their uses and abilities as well. So, very powerful piece of software on its own. Absolutely amazing. And look, I could use this to run combat on its own, but what I'm going to show you today is Realmworks using it. So back over here at Realmworks, I'm running my dungeon. You know, they've run across the little one section here, run across the bridge. I added in the Doppel Rats that come in and encountered them. All I have to do now is click this button. I want four Doppel Rats. Uh, that was four. Okay. All right. We now have the Doppel Rats in combat. Um, we can see all their abilities. All right. It's really super simple. Um, and what we're going to do is go straight into a fight. So I'll go show you tactical console. And you can see here, this is our tactical console. I'm going to integrate those Doppel Rats into my combat. Boom, there we are. New combat. Initiative has just been generated for everyone based on their uh, personal abilities and their roles that they're entitled to. You can see here the Doppel Rats hot rolled higher and off they go. I could use that automatic initiative and it's a really simple way to get into a fight. It's really quick. Um, but for those of you playing with old players, you probably find they want to roll their dice. Um, what I do is I personally just yell at people's names. So I'll go Dart Arian. And there we go. I'll give my roll to 15. I'll go Charlie. She go rolled a 2. And she'll blush. Kiri probably rolled like a 10. 
and you basically do that and you go through and just yell their name out, put their entry in and off you go. Um, once you've got it run, you just click resort and then we go, we've got a new initiative order uh, based on manual roles, really quick and, uh, and simple to manage. And then we start going through. So the Doppler Rat's going to basically attack Dardarian. Uh, it's going to come in here. Um, you know, the Doppler Rat, I would roll the dice based on his abilities. Um, and comes in here and let's say he does 15 damage. Um, he knocks him paralyzed when he does that. And off we go. Once he's had his turn, you just press this little button here. My next Doppler Rat, you know, might hit Dallin. Okay, I'm going to come in here and do 20 damage. Off we go. He's had his turn, off we go. As you can see, that's super simple to manage combat. Um, it gives you full access to manage their HP pool, um, plus all the conditions that will apply to them as well. Um, you can mouse over things to find out more details. And this is just obviously summary sheets. Or if you want to get into details, you might say, all right, let's have a look at Kiri. And boom, Kiri's sheet comes up. Now I can come into Kiri's spells and I can see what spells Kiri has. So I can come into the special tab and see all of Kiri's abilities, if she's got a question, whatever. Really simple. Um, and it just goes on there. Um, it has the ability to basically ready an action, which just basically takes them out of that round until they're ready to come back in. And off we go. Um, you go to the end of the round and it tracks how many rounds you're in. As I said, super simple, super efficient, very easy. Um, and once you're you finished, all the end, you can end the combat, come back here, you can see how much XP they're entitled to, and you can very quickly get rid of the enemies and reset back to just the players. And that's keeping track of the players' HP pool from where they were. So obviously people would need to heal if they wanted to heal. Um, and that's, that's easy to do, just through the, the healing functionality. So as you can see, coming from Realmworks over to Hero Labs is super easy, super efficient, and gives you a lot of powerful tools. Um, any players who have questions about their abilities or their spells, I have right at my fingertips. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is obviously it's not live with my players, and that you know my players update their sheet, I don't get that. So we just have a house rule that you know when they update their sheet, they need to come to my laptop and update their sheet on their my screen as well. And that works pretty well. We generally do that at the start of every day that we play. All right, so just to show you as well, if you were working with Hero Labs, um, go through and show you creation of a new character, just to show you how hard it is. Uh, you can see here I've got the community pack installed. So I'll just go through and enable a heap of options for this character. Letting us select out a whole heap of third party and uh, additional options. He's going to start at level one. He's not an NPC. Uh, we're going to do fixed scores. Boom. So we're going to choose a race. I'm going to be a goblin. I'm going to choose a class. I'm going to be a I'll be the new ranger. Let's start with that much cash. Uh, abilities, ranger, I'm going to probably go dex. Probably want some constitution. Now let's make everything up. Uh, he's not going to be charismatic because he's a goblin. What background has he got? No, oh, he's a criminal. He's chaotic, neutral. He's got a craft. He likes to play cards. Uh, let me just get some random traits. Uh, I need to be proficient in a couple of skills. And uh, my favorite enemy are humanoids. Probably humans and probably elves. There we go. So that's it. Uh, that's how long it took me to create a fully fledged character. Um, oh, I just missed languages there. Um, if you're trying to get new people into the game, this is a great way to do it because this is how people create characters on computer games now. They're comfortable with that concept. 
um, and given that you know you can come along and do this and you can spit out a character sheet for them very quickly and very efficiently I find it to be a very handy tool um, and I'll show you what these basically print out as here you can see the standard character sheet it gives a list down of all their abilities it's it's simple it's neat it's well laid out it doesn't look like the standard one from the normal tables obviously but that's not what you really want this is where it gets really beneficial in that you can actually print off a sheet that has all of their abilities pre-populated for them and you can hand them to the table and say right this is what you can do um, and for a new person joining the game that is a very simple way to do it uh, and it has the same functionality for spells as well all right this guy doesn't have any spells so there's nothing to print but as you can see that's very easy um, as a dungeon master as well though you've also got the encounter builder so here's all the monsters from the player handbook we could come in here we might have an ice devil uh, an adult copper dragon and two vampires joining our fight so you don't have to use realm works to bring your monsters in you can do it here super quick that's that's got all of their stats the only thing it doesn't have is a picture for legal reasons pictures are generally hard because of copyright um, another really cool thing that you can do that I use all the time uh, we're gonna go NPC enemy of the party let's come in here and actually do the custom monster and this lets you literally create something that's just whatever you want really really powerful tool all right so we'll go back to realmworks now and look that, that's basically it those, those two tools, uh, and I hope you've been able to see this from what I've showed you here, those two tools together as a dungeon master sitting in front of my players with all of these books that I used to have to have lying around me and pieces of paper and notepads and scribbles and it was a nightmare. Um, I'm an organisation freak uh, and this tool has been absolutely magnificent in allowing me to organise my, my campaign into a way that was manageable for me. Um, I still have a pad of paper and a pen in front of me for basic notes. Um, most of the day, those notes are just private messages between me and other players, um, or just for me to do some doodling while I'm waiting for an action to come through. Um, I don't need to track health points for huge fights anymore. That's all done for me. All the content is in front of me. Um, pretty much the only thing this software is missing is the ability to quickly and easily get the information in. Um, and that's coming, um, I suspect, by the end of the year, but Lone Wolf are keeping the, the lips shut on that one. Uh, but they are preparing a content market that's going to enable you to basically go in and purchase pre-populated modules uh, for your players to run through. And that will come with all of these things already pre-done. Uh, Hero Labs integration is apparently going to be fully built in, uh, which means you can literally go and purchase a module uh, have a load up into Realmworks and literally sit in front of the laptop and run that um, and use the full benefit of Realmworks and Hero Labs in order to run your games. I, I think that's going to be an absolute significant thing for me. Um, outside of that, the only thing I really feel is missing is the ability for my players to sort of interact with the data that I'm creating. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a player view app that you can log in and connect to other people's realms. Uh, my players don't use it because you have to have an application installed um, on a laptop in order to use it uh, and that for them isn't something they want to do um, not at the table anyway uh, so uh, Lone Wolf have indicated they're working on a web version that's basically going to allow you to go to a website and see all the revealed content and I think that's going to be a significant improvement for them um, because you know then I can just send by Facebook a link to my, my party and say look here's the content that we we discussed last night have a read have a look and they can have their questions I'll be really interested to see what they do with that um, but in a nutshell that's Realmworks that's Hero Labs um, I, I strongly suggest you check it out um, I'm pretty sure they do have trials of both pieces of software um, or at least I think Realmworks has like a 60 day money back guarantee or something so you can check it out uh, are pretty much risk-free at this stage and if you like it I would strongly suggest you go ahead and use it um, it's going to be a incredibly powerful tool that I, I feel that once the content market is in and the web viewers in it's going to really shake up the industry um, and really set the benchmark for what 
you know, digital tools can do for the dungeon master at the table. Um, I guess what it's not, it's not a, a virtual tabletop program. So, you know, you roll 20s, uh, it doesn't really compete with that market in my opinion. Yes, it does do Fog of War and you can display your maps off to your other players, but um, they're not focusing on being a VTT. Uh, this is more designed, in my opinion, to be a dungeon master managing your entire campaign. I would still use VTT software. Um, I personally use uh, one of the map tools, uh, or map tools is what it's called, and I use that to, to manage all my digital maps. Um, but yeah, this is Realmworks, this is Hero Labs. Check it out. Hope you've enjoyed.